Welcome to Power System Experts. This is Power Electronics Series with PSCAT. It is our first session on design and simulation of a buck converter. The contents of this session will be an introduction to buck converter, the circuit diagram and working of a buck converter, its operation, and there will be a design example. And after that, we will move towards a simulation in PSCAT. So a buck converter is a power electronic circuit which is used to convert high value DC voltage into low value DC voltage. So it's a step down converter for DC voltage. Here you can see a basic circuit of a buck converter. It consists of a switching uh, device like an IGBT or a MOSFET, and a diode as a switching elements and there is an LC filter to provide smooth DC voltage to the load. The source for a buck converter is also a DC voltage source and we assume a DC, constant DC voltage source for understanding uh, of the uh, for understanding the basic uh, working of a DC converter. So how a buck converter works is that its output voltage is a function of input voltage and the duty cycle which is the percentage on time duration of this switch during uh, a switching cycle. The transfer function of a buck converter is uh, V out equals to D times V in. D is the duty cycle and V in is the input voltage. So uh, if we assume that if this uh, switch is being turned on and off at 50 kilohertz by a gate driver circuit and the duty cycle is 50% and if we give 10 volt input uh, from this DC source, the output will be 5 volt according to this uh, transfer function circuit for 50% duty cycle. So uh, let's uh, have a look at operation of the buck converter. So when the switch uh, or uh, which is a MOSFET or an IGBT is on, the diode uh, will be reversed bias due to uh, positive voltage at uh, this point, which is the <clears throat> inside of this diode. And uh, the path of current will be through the inductor and into the load and the capacitor. If we say that the inductor is charged during uh, this time and the capacitor is also charged and the load is being fed from the, uh, by the current uh, through the diode and from the source. And when the uh, and when uh, the this uh, MOSFET is off during the other half cycle of the switching cycle, uh, this diode will be forward biased. Uh, it's because it's a, a basic uh, property of inductor to keep the, the direction of, of the current so it constant. So when the MOSFET is off, the polarity of voltage across the inductor will be reversed and now the current will flow in this direction. So the, uh, the energy stored in the inductor will be discharged and it will uh, uh, discharge through the load and it will be also charging, uh, will be also charging the capacitor. So, uh, <clears throat> a real question for a uh, question for a design engineer is how to choose the frequency inductor capacitor and the switching elements for a buck converter. Uh, the choice of inductor and capacitor are decided based upon the load and the switching frequency. Generally, higher is the frequency, lower are the inductor and capacitor, and larger is the load, uh, then larger are the inductor and capacitor. We select an IGBT or MOSFET and diode with overrated currents and uh, overrated current and uh, voltage readings. Uh, we are not going to discuss analysis of a converter and derive the equations for it. We have uh, we will just present the formulas here and uh, let you know how to uh, design it. And when we will move to our simulation. So. Say, uh, say that you uh, got uh, one ampere load uh, which uh, needs to be derived at 5 volts and you got a fixed 12 volt power supply to derive it. So you need a buck converter here for driving the 5 volt load from the 12 volt supply. So your input voltage V in is 12 volt, 12 volts. Your output voltage uh, is 5 volts and uh, the duty cycle according to transfer function uh, we can calculate uh, it becomes 4.0.4167. So uh, we say that 20% ripple in load current is allowed. We uh, assume that 
and also we assume that 2% ripple in the output voltage is allowed. So for 5 uh, volts, the voltage ripple is 0.1 and for 1 ampere current, the 20% ripple is 0.2. So we select a switching frequency of 50 kilohertz. So uh, if we put the, our uh, known parameters into this formula for calculation of inductor, it becomes uh, 29.17 milli Henry. And if we put the same uh, parameters into this formula for calculation of capacitor, then this becomes a 16.166 uh, microfarad capacitor. So, uh, now let's uh, move towards the simulation. Let's open PSCAD, double click on it, and it's now open. Go to PSCAD, new, new case, M your case, bug converter, bug converter, okay. So a new case is opened here. Go to master library, and then go to power electronics and HVDC library and select an IGBT and a diode from here. Copy them both. Paste them in your case. Okay, we missed the IGBT. Copy it again and paste it here. Okay, we are going to need the source. Go to sources. Here and select the source. Paste it. Go back to main library and we are going to need common signals and functions. Okay, select this function generator. Forget all this. Paste it here. Go back to master library. Go to passive elements and we are going to need a register, a capac an inductor, a capacitor and a ground element from here. Paste them all your case and uh, now we just need uh, some meters uh, select one m meter for inductor current another one for load current select a voltmeter to for input voltage and another voltmeter for output voltage now we are going to configure all the elements double click on the source it's a DC source and it's an ideal DC source. Go to its signal parameters and put 12 volts here. Okay. And set this range time to 1 millisecond. Click OK. So the source is now configured. Bring it here and now double click on the IGBT. And everything is good. The interpolated pulse is yes. The interpolated pulse is yes. Click OK. Double click on the function generator. Put your uh, switching frequency 50 kilohertz here. It's now 50 kilohertz. The signal type is a pulse. And the duty cycle is a 41.67%. Okay. Okay. So one more thing, uh, enable this interpolation compatibility here because we have enabled it in the IGBT. Now double click on the diode and we are <coughs> disabling this number circuit. Double click on the resistor and put 5 ohms. 5 ohms. And inductance over inductance calculated was 29.17 milli Henry and the capacitance that we calculated was 16.66 microfarad. Okay, okay, so level this meter is V in, this meter is V out. This is for I load. And this is one is for high inductor. Okay, so we have leveled and configured everything. Let's arrange everything in a good fashion for like a beautiful circuit. You can press R to rotate any element. So the IGBD is placed 
the diode is placed, the ground element is placed, the inductor is placed, and then the meter for inductor current. There comes the capacitor, and then the load, and then the meter for load current. Okay, so everything is now arranged. So we have to enter wire mode to connect everything. Click here, and then uh, left click and right click here to finish the wire. This way, we are going to connect everything. So we have just connected everything here. Now go to a data label, place it on the output of the function generator, name it K8, and then copy this label and paste it on the gate of the RGBT. Okay, so it's placed. Now we are going to need output channels for our signals that we are going to observe. Output channel, pick an output channel and name it input voltage. Input voltage. And take a data label, place it on the input of the output channel. Double click it and name it VN. VN. Okay, one more thing. Uh, double click on your output channel and scale it by thousand. And unit and mention it units is volt. Click OK. Now we are going to place in output channels for our all other signals. So here we have placed output channels for all our signals. Uh, bring it here. Okay, so now everything is placed. Uh, we are going to put uh, graphs for our output channels. Just expand the page, go to size and expand it. Right click on the output channel, go to graphs, meters and controls and select an overlay graph with signal and place it. Okay. In this way, we are going to put graphs for our all other output channels. Okay, so all uh, graphs are placed. So now go to project, general settings, go to simulation uh, runtime, uh, set the TV run of simulation to 1 millisecond, the simulation time step is 0.1 microsecond, set it to 1 microsecond and channel plot step also to 1 microsecond, click OK, now go to home and build your project. We are successfully built. Run it. Uh, it's running now. So it's complete. Okay, click on a graph and press R button on your keyboard. It will select an appropriate range for your graph. So you see that the output voltage is 5 volts here. Let's have a look at the gate signal. This is our gate signal 50 kilohertz. And you see the input voltage 12 volt and the output voltage 5 volt. Let's vary the duty cycle to 50 percent and see what happens. Duty to 50 percent. Now uh, the 50% duty cycle should give us 6 volts in the output. It's complete. And you can see that the output is now 6 volts. Which verifies the duty, uh, which was, verifies the transform function of our converter. And this is all for today's lecture. See you in the next lecture.